Hello everyone and before going to the design of laterally unsupported beams as we have discussed right now till the design of laterally supported beams and we have only seen the design of those beams which are rolled section. So what about the design of built up beams? So design of built up beams can also be done under the uh, laterally supported beams. And in that case, the only difference that comes into account is the web buckling and web crippling. See, these two phenomena are mostly important in case of built up beams. And these two checks, web buckling strength and web crippling strength, both has to be applied for the design of built up beams. And web buckling is the buckling of the entire web section due to the uh, slenderness of the web section in comparison due to the uh, point load that is coming uh, above certain regions and web crippling is due to the crossing or the bearing of the web section either at the supports or at the application of the point loads. So in case of web buckling the entire web buckles like this okay this is the web portion and in case of web crippling uh, web crippling make the web only crippled at certain reason okay or the web can become like this also okay so these two uh, are the patterns which get formed in case of web crippling and these two uh, uh, checks has to be applied in only in the case of built up beams not in the case of rolled beams okay and in the built up beams design it becomes difficult why i say difficult because now we have to uh, go for the calculation of all the values of i y y i z z z e z p m p m y all these values and the total area of the section all these values have to be calculated separately it's not so easy it's a very big numerical and at the end after checking for the uh, design bending moment design shear strength and uh, for the deflection control at the end we also check for the web buckling strength and web crippling strength so we have not discussed entirely the design for the web buckling strength and web crippling strength since otherwise the scope would become very very uh, out of the syllabus so that's why we limit ourselves of the design of built up beams otherwise it can be done okay i can explain it but since uh, this will involve a lot of calculation and generally design of built up section is skipped and if you like you can go and everything is given in this textbook and you can have a look how these uh, built up beams are here made because when uh, we go for the built up beams actually when the moment to be registered is very heavy as you can see written here and available rolled section may not be sufficient in such cases built up beams are used and in bolted beams the area of tension flange is reduced by bolt holes hence the actual neutral axis moves up and izz value changes however in design practice the neutral axis is still regarded as the symmetric axis and in this case we add cover plates also at the flanges so you can see in this example problem it is being asked that to design a simply supported beam of 10 meter effective span length carrying a total factored load of 60 kN per meter and the depth of beam shall not exceed 500 millimeter and the compression flange of beam is laterally supported by floor construction so it's a case of laterally supported beams only and here we have gone for a trial section by calculating the bending moment first of all and then the value of jet p required and then we have chosen ismb 450 why this we have chosen because the depth of beam shall not exceed 500 millimeter okay so this is the limitation being kept here but the jet p value of ismb 450 is uh, lesser than what is required jet p value you see this this is jet p value required so this is less than jet p required now how can we meet the remaining requirements of jet p value 
so that value of zp is provided by using cover plates and how much zp is remaining that we calculate by the difference of above two and then we use this ap into fy the simple formula for the calculation of area of cross sectional area of two cover plates okay and then we calculate this ap value and then we provide 220 into 20 mm plates on either side of the ismb 450 and uh, then we calculate uh, for the check for the shear and uh, similarly we go for the uh, check for the low shear or high shear okay after doing the section classification and accordingly check for the bending moments and uh, finally we go for the check for deflection also but at the end if you notice this Uh, the section is coming safe in almost everything but here we have also checked for web buckling okay now web buckling check is also done and web crippling check is also done so both these checks have to be done okay so this is check in web crippling and this is check in web buckling so you see in the check for web buckling actually we are seeing the buckling of the web so that's why we calculate the slenderness ratio of the web portion so this is what it's equal to 2.5 into h1 by tw and then we calculate n1 and fcd value and it involves interpolation it's not very easy and finally we check that it should be greater than the applied load that is coming 300 kN similarly for the web crippling also is done so this is how we design in the built up beams and now we come to the design of laterally unsupported beams and design of laterally unsupported beams involves the tabular approach or if you want to go for the empirical approach that depends completely on you empirical approach uh, involves the calculation of different parameters like alpha lt is given uh, that's sure but lambda lt has to be calculated and then we have to calculate xi lt and then uh, many parameters are calculated in this way and then we use all those to calculate the value of finally fcd and uh, this is equal to mdv is equal to fcd into area of the section okay so this calculation uh, is lengthier but if we go for the tabular approach so that becomes little easier so as we have discussed that in this case first of all uh, we decide that uh, the bending is about the minor axis and section should be hollow and non dimensional gamma L, uh, lambda lt should be less than 0.4 and it is equal to root under fy upon fcrb and uh, here we have to use different tables specifically table number 13 and 14 from the is codes and imperfection factor alpha lt 0.21 for rolled steel section and alpha lt 0.49 for welded steel sections and then we see these tables 13a and 13b okay for uh, calculation of critical stresses fcrb okay and fbd so fbd fbd is calculated for both value of alpha lt okay in case of 13a you get the value of fbd for alpha lt 0.21 and in case of table 13b you get the value of fbd for alpha lt value of 0.49 now this value of fbd is used to calculate the value of this fbd is calculated with the help of this value of fcrb of course okay so first of all we have to use Uh, this table number 14 to get the value of fcrb and the formulas are not very difficult in this case and first of all if you see this numerical and here it ask us to design an ismb 500 section as a beam over a span of 6 meter with simply supported ends and determine the maximum factored uniformly distributed load that the beam can carry if the ends are restrained against torsion but compression flange is laterally unsupported so it that means it's a laterally unsupported beams and from this we can guess 
that uh, all the data uh, can be listed since the section is given ISMB 500. So, we have written down all the properties of the section. Okay. And uh, now we calculate the effective length for torsional buckling equal to 6 meter and then the slenderness ratio KL by R is calculated and then H upon TF is calculated. Now with the help of KL upon R and H upon TF we can use this table number 14 to get the value of FCRB. From where we can note down all the values like for H upon TF 25 and 30 we can write the value of KL upon R is equal to this value for 170 and for 30 it is equal to this. Similarly, for 180 it is equal to this and for equal to 30 it is equal to this. So, now we have to calculate the value of uh, FCRB corresponding to this value of H upon TF and this value of um, KL upon R. So, this can be done with the help of interpolation technique and it is very simple as it is being shown here also. So, you can go for this method also and you can of course do this just like they have calculated first of all the value of x and then they have calculated the value of y. So, here first of all the value of x is calculated and then the value of y is calculated and finally they have obtained the value of o. So, this is what they are going to check o value ok this o value. So, this is simple method interpolation method involves three points one point is here known one point is here known now we have to get this point. So, please revise the interpolation method again and again I am saying so that you can calculate the location of this point. So, after calculating the value of FCRB nothing remains much you can uh, go for a table 13a since this is our uh, section in which alpha LT is equal to 0.21. And there if you use the value of FCRB and for FY 250, you will find that FVD equal to 77.3 Newton per mm square for FCRB 100 and for FCRB 150, FBD value is this, but for us FCRB is this. So, again we have to do one more interpolation to get the value of FVD. So, this value of FVD is calculated. And now, if we check the width of outstanding leg and do this ratio check. So, we will arrive that our section belongs to class 1 plastic category and MD can be calculated using this formula and here we have directly used this value of FVD. So, this FVD calculation involves first of all you have to calculate FCRB and from FCRB only you can calculate FVD. And once FVD is calculated, you decide which section your which class your section belongs to, and then apply the design moment calculations. Now, after calculating the design moment strength, which is equal to 187, now we have calculated the design moment due to the external load. So here UDL W is in kilonewton meter, so MD will be equal to WL square by 8, and it comes out to be this, and we can see that MD is greater than m. So, this one is satisfied. Now, we can also go for the checks uh, for the shear strength and the deflection control and even web buckling and web crippling, but web buckling and web crippling will not be there as it is a rolled section to ensure that the above load can be carried safely. So, this is how although we have discussed this uh, laterally unsupported beams very fastly since everything was done here on the book, but when you go for the calculation and the use of tables, it is a rigorous approach, it is really a rigorous approach, it is a humongous task uh, because you have to do multiple interpolations or if you do not like interpolation, then you have to go for the empirical formulas given in the IS code. Uh, and there you have to calculate lambda LT, xi LT, alpha LT, gamma LT like that all those things have to be calculated and then used. And finally, you will get the same value of here uh, MD value also and MD is equal to uh, this uh, formula beta B into ZP into FBD ok and here we use FBD directly. So, this is how we design laterally unsupported beams. 
and now the remaining topic is the design of pleat girders and that's of course is a big topic again even the design of pleat girders involves a complete discussion into three four lectures at least three four lectures and of course we don't have much time for that but of course we will try to discuss that also in brief at least in one lecture with all the design steps and an introduction to plate girders and then finally we will move to the roof trusses and there we will do the design of purlins so stay tuned and stay safe thank you